today I'm in a long and narrow state that hugs 400 miles of shoreline along this ocean, the Gulf of Mexico. The state of Veracruz is known as Mexico's outdoor adventure playground. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Vondruska. Come with me as we journey through this state where I can show you all the different possible opportunities to participate in outdoor adventure activities. In this episode, we will traverse this long and narrow Mexico state from its western mountainous edge to its deep canyons and fast-moving rivers. Then we will take a look at its coastal areas with a vast sea of sand dunes, wide sandy beaches, rocky sections of coastline, and just offshore, we will explore its underwater coral reefs. Then we will travel south to experience mangrove estuaries, hidden tropical waterfalls, warm water lakes, and a hike in its rainforests. So if you're ready, let's go explore the diverse geographic beauty this state has to offer and all of the outdoor adventure activities that you can do here in Veracruz, Mexico. The Sierra Madre Oriental Mountains, which run north-south along the western edge of the state of Veracruz, provide many outdoor activities for high-altitude adventures. There you will also find the tallest mountain in Mexico, Pico de Orizaba. It's a majestic mountain with the Jamapa Glacier adorning its north face. This glacier produces water runoff which over millions of years has carved many fast-moving rivers. The byproduct of this is excellent opportunities for going on whitewater river rafting adventures. The area most known as a starting point for these rafting adventures is a small riverside town of Halcamoco. Located two hours from the city of Veracruz and only 45 minutes from the capital city of Jalapa, this town is the home to many river rafting tour companies. Some of them also have their own quaint accommodations for their adventurous guests. And yet for many, because of the relative proximity to these two major cities, travelers can stay in one of them and easily go for just a one-day rafting tour and then return to the city later that day. Of course, during the rainy season, which is generally June through September, the higher volume of water creates a more thrilling experience with faster rapids. So especially during those months, plan to get wet. But even if your plans are to go more in the winter months, in the drier season, a rafting experience in Veracruz will still be quite memorable. The summit of Pico de Orizaba tops out at 18,500 feet and is on the bucket list of many climbing enthusiasts from around the world. I am told that it's a non-technical climb. You just have to acclimate to the thin air deal with any sudden climatic changes in the weather, and then hike up the glacier to the top of the mountain. Hiking in this higher altitude region of Veracruz is also an activity which many people enjoy doing. They come for the fresh air, the long view vistas, as well as all the great health benefits associated with hiking. Another type of hiking in western Veracruz is in its deep canyons. The word for this kind of activity is called canyoneering, or in Spanish, canyonismo. You first hike down into the canyon to the stream at the bottom, and then follow the stream as it winds its way down, usually to a bigger stream or river. This kind of hike consists of negotiating over rocks and boulders, wading in the stream, and on many canyoneering trips, repelling from the precipice of a cliff adjacent to a waterfall. Because of the cold water coming from the mountains, it is usually advisable to wear a neoprene suit to make your canyoneering and repelling experience more enjoyable. 
tour operators in this region include the rental of a neoprene suit as part of the tour price. There are other locations to go rappelling in Veracruz and we will explore these places in a moment. Fun zipline rides are a great first experience for those who are just getting into this whole new realm of active adventure activities. Ziplining really does not take any effort. With your safety helmet on, you are tethered to the thick cable above as you sit in your seat harness. The zipline guide gives you a little push and then you're off, flying through the air to enjoy the thrilling bird's eye view from many feet above the ground. With 400 miles of Gulf of Mexico coastline, the state of Veracruz is similar to the state of California. Both run north-south and are very long, but not very wide. The higher altitude regions of Veracruz to the west are located approximately 100 miles from its east coast. The state of Veracruz currently is not a highly advertised place to visit for foreigners. The Office for Mexico Tourism puts most of their advertising budget into promoting Mexico's Caribbean coast where you find Cancun, Playa del Carmen, and Tulum. It also promotes heavily the resort areas found on the Pacific side such as Puerto Vallarta, Extapa, Zihuantaneo, and Cabo San Lucas. Those locations are considered as Mexico's bread and butter for raking in the tourism dollars. Veracruz State, except for in the port city of Veracruz, you will not find big resorts, fancy restaurants, and plenty of nightlife. What you will find are fishermen with their boats on the beach, locally owned small palapa restaurants, and bunches of simple two to three star hotels. They're clean and comfortable, but not extravagant by any stretch of the term. Veracruz is a popular destination for Mexican families and groups of Mexican retirees from other locations in the country. They come on group bus tours to enjoy the beaches and warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Less than two hours north from the city of Veracruz are some nice beaches with names like Villa Rica, La Mancha, and Playa Chachalacas. Here is just a historical side note. The Villa Rica Beach was a location where Spaniard Hernan Cortez and his men landed on Good Friday in the year 1519. From there, in less than two years, he and the other Spaniards were able to conquer this new territory from the Aztecs and claim it for Spain. In fact, they called it Nuevo España, or New Spain. Near this beach there are rocky cliffs and over time the constant effort of the crashing ocean waves against these cliffs have formed channels through the rocks. Now the oncoming waves flow into these channels and build up enough momentum to crash and shoot upwards. It's fun to watch from above. Also, it's fun to rappel down this cliff to really get a close view of this force of nature. Near the beach at La Mancha, we will find an area of mangroves growing. The gnarled roots of these trees stick up out of the water creating sort of a surreal scene. Small crabs can be seen scurrying around these roots. Boat rides offered by local lancheros will take you into this watery forest of mangroves to view it up close. Just north of the small beachside town of Playa Chachalacas, with a population of about 400, we encounter another kind of sea. It's a sea of sand dunes along the shoreline. It's an impressive series of many sand dunes covering approximately two square miles. These dunes are excellent for riding up and over them in ATVs, Jeeps, and dune buggies. Hang gliders can sometimes also be seen catching the air currents being blown in from offshore. I have personally traversed these dunes in an ATV on many occasions and can tell you it's a blast. Another great adventure is sliding down the dunes on sand surfboards. Sandboarding is an activity which can be done by kids as well as adults. Venga, Frankie. 
Ahí va, bien. Bien, 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 bien. Sí, es que está bien. Eso es. Esto se va en cuerazo. Bien. ¡Ah! 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 Ok, perfecto. Tienes caída de 8.5. <laughs> He's saying, uh, like the Olympics, he got an 8.5 for that uh, run. <laughs> and if standing on the board does not work well for you, well, you can always sit on the board and ski down the hill like you're on a snow toboggan. papá! Ese es Toño, Pepito y Flor. Just off the coast of Playa Chachalacas, and also the city of Veracruz, there are a series of coral reefs. All right, here we go. Mornings usually work best to go snorkeling, as it can be the time of day that the ocean is at its calmest moments. The coral reefs found off the coast of the port city have been declared a nationally protected underwater park by the Mexican government. There are strict laws prohibiting the destruction of the reefs. Only a handful of tour operators have been given permission to take small groups out to these beautiful reefs to snorkel and scuba dive. Another fun adventure activity is to go kayaking or stand up paddle boarding in the ocean. There are a few companies in the city of Veracruz which rent these items and also provide guides. Again, the best time to go is in the morning when the ocean tends to be more calm. And if you like fishing, the waters off the coast of Veracruz are great for catching marlin, tarpon, dorado, even mako sharks. One thing I should tell you though is that here in the city of Veracruz, most of the guides that can take you out don't speak English. So if you are looking for someone who does speak English and you want to go fishing, give me a call, contact me, and I'll try to help you out. You should note that from November to April, there are times when a strong north wind coming from the ocean blows throughout the coastline and can last for 24 to 48 hours. Obviously, any plans for doing activities in the ocean will have to be postponed as the sea can get quite rough. Traveling 100 miles south of Veracruz City is a Los Tuxtlas region. This is where we find the rainforests of Veracruz. In this region is located one of the largest freshwater lakes in the whole country. Lake Catimarco has 32 miles of shoreline with almost all of it being undeveloped. In fact, there is a section of shoreline with no road to reach it. And most of the road that does wind its way around this lake is marked with small to giant potholes. During the wetter season, these holes fill with water making driving a real rural adventure for travelers. A vehicle with high ground clearance is a must on this road. A few small villages dot the shoreline, but only a few. There is one major town by the same name as a lake. There we can find some restaurants, small hotels, and a typical small town square with a municipal building and local Catholic church taking up space on two of its sides. Along the lakefront in the town of Catemaco are boat drivers eagerly willing to take you on a boat tour of the lake. They are called lancheros and their boats are called lanchas. These launches can hold approximately 10 to 12 passengers. Because there is no marina, this huge tropical lake is almost always void of pleasure boats. The only boat on this vast lake are some small rowboats with fishermen using nets and the lancheros coming from the town of Catemarco with their visiting passengers. On rare occasions, we might see a private speedboat pulling a water skier. 
In the past, I have lived and worked out of this town for several months each year over a period of 11 years, and in that time, I saw a total of about five to six private boats pulling a skier. That's all. In all the months each year, I was living there. For most folks visiting this area, securing a boat ride with a lanchero is the main activity. From the lake, we can get some great views of the low-lying tropical hills that surround the lake. Plus, on some of the small islands found in the lake, we can spot spider monkeys. On one island, there's a family of baboons, which were brought over from Thailand many years ago for some experiments which were conducted by the University of Veracruz. When their experiments were over, they left them to live on the island. Enticing these baboons with fruit, the loncheros usually can coax them onto the shore for their passengers to get a better look and take some photos. Because these creatures have been exploited as a tourist destination, their fat bellies are a good indication of how much food the loncheros bring each day to get them out of the trees and onto the shore. The more up-close watching their passengers can experience with these creatures, the better their tips might be for the lanchero at the end of the boat tour. Hidden within this tropical paradise are beautiful waterfalls found in the jungle areas. Directly across the lake from the town of Catimarco is a little village called Benito Juarez. In this community, a small group of men learned to guide people on well-maintained stone and dirt paths the village people created to lead their guests into the jungle to view these waterfalls and to hear about the medicinal purposes of some of the plants and trees. On a hot sunny day, the cold pools below these falls are a haven for travelers to take a dip to cool off. And the more adventurous folks will swim against the opposing current which pushes out from the falls to swim under it and enlist its soothing natural shoulder and back massage. Mother Nature sure does know how to pamper a person with great waterfall massages. At some of these hidden waterfalls, there are opportunities to jump off the high cliff next to the falls and into the deep, clear pools below. Some of these jumps can be as high as 30 feet. Holy crap, that's a long way down. There is also another large lake in this southern region of Veracruz state called Lake Sante Comapan. It's different than Lake Catimarco because this lake does flow into the Gulf of Mexico. So the lake is partially diluted with salt water. They call this sweet water or brackish water. Because of this freshwater salt water combination, mangrove estuaries can be found. They are sort of like canals jutting out from the lake creating long extension fingers. Entering one of these canals brings us into a world of gnarled roots coming out of the water to form the base of these mangrove trees. These canals are also havens for tropical birds and as I mentioned before, cute red crabs that crawl over the tangled roots near the water level. Some years ago, when I was living and working from Katemako, a big film crew came to shoot scenes for a movie. The director, was Mel Gibson, and the movie he created was called Apocalypto. Maybe you saw it at the theater or now on one of the cable movie channels. In his movie, there is a scene toward the end of the film where a big waterfall called Salto de Ijipantla was used during a key moment for the story. I personally call this waterfall the Niagara Falls of Veracruz. Especially during the rainy or summer months, this waterfall could become very, very powerful. And yes, visitors will get sprayed by the mist created from the falls hitting the river below as we venture on the path which takes us very close to the bottom of the falls. There is also a viewing area high up near the precipice of the waterfalls where we can view this massive waterfall from a different perspective. An hour's ride over a rough road from Catamarco will bring us to the Gulf of Mexico shores. Along the way, we will pass through untouched jungle where there is a large tract of property which is owned and maintained by the University of Veracruz. And we're coming up to the camp of the Biology Institute here for the University. It's actually 
the University of Mexico, um, and not necessarily just the University of Veracruz. So they have uh, students who come here and they study the environment here because, again, it's a natural, uh, pristine location where no people go in. You can also smell the, the pure oxygen in the air from the plants that are taking in the carbon dioxide and spewing out the oxygen. And so it smells very, very fresh here. Upon reaching the coast, the road abruptly ends with a turnaround at the small seaside village of Montepio. Brown sand beaches and locally owned small Palapa restaurants can be found there. Montepio is a laid-back tropical beach village that few foreign travelers have discovered. The people you do see there are usually just local families enjoying their home tropical paradise. FYI, don't expect anyone to speak English here. However, with a few Spanish words memorized such as una cerveza por favor and a few words to order food such as uh, camarones, shrimp, and mariscos, seafood, you should be able to order some of the freshest seafood you have ever eaten. Under the shade of a palm thatched palapa or huge tent canopy overlooking a placid, semi-deserted beach with calm ocean waves lapping up on shore, a cold cerveza in hand and some yummy seafood with rice and refrijoles, you may start to feel the life of living in the slow land. This southern coastal area of Veracruz is known as the Costa de Oro. The outdoor activities you can experience here include swimming in the ocean, taking a banana boat ride with one of the local people who happen to own a boat, and swimming or wading in the small rivers that flow into the ocean. Another fun activity is to take a stand-up paddleboard on one of these peaceful rivers. Another fun activity is to take an ocean boat ride either from the village of Montepio or from another nearby seaside village called Arroyo de Lisa. A lanchero can take us into the ocean and along the shoreline to an area of tall rock cliffs which tower above the waves below to view a section of rock that broke away from the main cliff over the millennia. The first known record of seeing this split rock formation called Roca Partida was by a Spanish expedition way back in 1542. Another place your boat driver will highlight is a sea cave carved out by the constant wave action over time. If the sea is calm, it's possible that he can maneuver his boat to go into the cave. As the story goes, there was a Dutch pirate by the name of Lawrence de Graaf. He was also known as the pirate Lorencio. It's said that he would stash his captured booty in this cave to hide it until he was done plundering the area. It was a great location for his captured treasures since there was no entrance by land to this cave, only by sea. Today one of the fun activities is to repel from the cliff above this sea cave into a wading boat bobbing the ocean below right in front of the cave entrance. There is one more place a lanchero will take you to see on this boat tour and that is an island rookery of hundreds of seabirds. You can easily spot this bird island from a distance because of the overwhelming amount of seabirds circling above the island. From a distance it looks like a scene out of the movie Jurassic Park. As you get closer, you can then begin to see the white pooped stained rocks and the hundreds of birds milling above this island. The predominant birds seen here are brown pelicans and seagulls. However, there are many other species as well. This rural tropical rainforest area in southern Veracruz is truly way off the well-worn tourist paths others travel on throughout Mexico. Getting to the city of Veracruz is only a two hour flight from Houston, Texas, or from Mexico City it's an hour flight or six hour bus ride. If you're coming from Cancun, you can take an in-country flight via 
Viva Aerobus <laughs> to Veracruz, and that's only two hours. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video about all the adventure activities you can do here in the state of Veracruz. Until next time, as they say in Spanish, nos vemos pronto. We'll see you soon. The camera went on that one. Good job. Oh, you got all wet there.